Today, we'll be modifying this J bot. We're gonna add these two pass through cards to it, and this SAS expander, and these cables, and then hopefully, we'll be able to connect it to a SAS HBA using only one cable. Hi, my name is Petar, and you're watching Tech Jumble. Let me explain why we are doing this. So, by default, this J bot has these four SAS connectors right here and it has its own HBA which is some proprietary Marvel stuff um, which isn't really supported well on Linux it's not supported well on Windows either but on Linux it really really sucks so what I want to do is not use that HBA card and uh, use something else also in order to connect all 16 drives that this JBOT supports, you need to connect all four cables, which is not really something that I want. First, I don't want to take two PCIe slots on my motherboard just so I can connect external storage. I have four GPUs that I want to put in there, and I already have all the slots taken. So let's, uh, let's begin by unscrewing this and... Uh, See where we go. All right, and the last screw. Okay, so let's open it up, see what's inside. All right, so I already went through uh, the layout of this case before, uh, so I'm not gonna do that again. Essentially, we have uh, two slots here. Uh, that we can use on the right hand side and two slots on the left hand side so I'm gonna utilize those so in these uh, small slots right here we're gonna put in this and in the big slot we are gonna put in this thing why are we doing this? well as I already said I have limited number of PCIe slots and I don't want to take two of them uh, for HBAs, so I'm just gonna install one HBA and connect two boxes with one cable each and that will hopefully me allow me to connect up to 32 drives with just two cables. Now that we have these blanking plates removed we can install these two pass-through connectors so we're gonna install one right here like so okay it's nicely secured and then we have the second one right there okay. there we go I think we stripped it okay now with those two connectors firmly in place, uh, we can proceed and install uh, this expander. But first I need to remove this uh, short plate and add a long plate to it. All right, so I really didn't wish for it to come to this, but the plate that came with the expander doesn't really match it. it the connectors and the mounting for the bracket are not really aligning well. So I'm going to have to take the Dremel and basically expand this hole. What can you do? So let me get to it. All right, so let me find the cutoff wheel. Where is it? It should be somewhere here. Yep, there it is. I put it in there. All right, that should do it. That's plenty fast. Okay, let me get to it and I'll be right back. All right, so um, I guess that looks about right. Uh, it should uh, fit it properly now. All right, so yeah, fits like a glove. It looks like uh, the plate was sent for a different model that has these slots offset by one, but okay. That's that. Uh, it should work pretty well. Let's see. All right. So there we go. 
kind of sort of successful modification. It looks fine. We'll see if this card still works. Okay, so let's get it installed. But first, before installing, let me handle electricals. Let me get 5 volt and 12 volt from somewhere in here. All right, so with the card done and prepped and with the bracket removed and with the wire spliced, we now have to check uh, voltage. So we are going to first check 12 volt. Right. Okay, so that's 12 volt. Nice. And let me check 5 volt. And that's 5 volts. Nice. Nice. All right. So we have both 5 and 12 volt. Now let's install the card and connect it. So we connected power to the card and we connected all four cables. They're going to go through the case, through this routing slot right here. And then they're going to go outside. And from there, they're going to connect to this. Right. So the only thing that remains currently is to power this on and see if we get magic smoke or not. So uh, there was no magic smoke. Uh, there is no other way for me to test this. Uh, there is a lot of metal in this case. It's going to short something out. So I'm going to fully assemble it, move it down, connect it to an HBA and see if it works or not. Okay, so this is how it looks with everything installed. Cables are routed really good. I really like it. It's clean. Nice. So I had to replace a screw right here because I stripped the other one. This one was a bit bigger, thankfully. And uh, it, this plate is now fixed. It's not going anywhere. So that's good. So let me turn this on right now and see what's happening. I'm going to ramp up the fans here. And just see what's going on. All right. So it says here that the system is booting. Nice. So let's see what happens after this. Here there is nothing on there. We have a green right light right here. Okay. So the system is fully booted and the card is flashing green. So I guess that that's that. Um, so let me get this off the workbench down there and uh, see what's going on. Okay, so I forgot to show one last step that needed to be done. So I uh, connected these pass-through uh, cables to the outside and to the JBOD's native uh, connectors right here. These cables are a bit too long. These are one meter long and I need like 30 centimeter or one feet long cables. So I'm going to work on getting those. But as it stands currently, the box works perfectly fine. There is enough space inside to properly route all the cables the expander here sits nicely the power is cleanly spliced from the existing wires inside the case so in general this was a great success um, i'm gonna i have another box like this one i'm gonna modify it also and uh, this is gonna go and connect to my plotter uh, and it's going to be awesome. I have 16 slots, quick swap, no tools necessary. They're easy to pull out. They're easy to put in. That's exactly what I need. I have a, an order to plot about 19,000 plots in a few weeks. And then I have 23,000 plots right after that. This is going to come real handy when I start plotting those. All right, so I connected the, the JBOD to HBA and all of the drives show up. As it stands currently, this works perfectly fine, exactly as it should work. I was afraid that these SATA redrivers that the board has would impact the connectivity, but it didn't seem to impact anything. The expander here does its job as it should. So, that will be it for this modification. The box is back together. The mess has been cleaned up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.